Hey folks, welcome to the podcast. This week's episode is brought to you in part by HelloFresh. You know HelloFresh. It's that service that sends you farm fresh, pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes right to your door. You can skip trips to the grocery store and count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. That's why it's America's number one meal kit. I love HelloFresh because it's still cooking. It's not like they send you meals and you just reheat them in the microwave and it feels like you're eating leftovers. That would suck. I love cooking, I love cooking delicious food, and I love trying new recipes. But what I don't like are any of the other things involved in that. I hate figuring out what to make. I hate buying big jars of spices that I'm only gonna use for this one recipe and letting them go to waste. I hate having to buy all these big things of vegetables and proteins when I'm only cooking for my wife. HelloFresh solves all those problems. Skip the grocery store. Skip figuring out, flipping through recipe books, what am I going to make? Skip buying big jars of spices and supplies and sauces only to make one meal. HelloFresh will handle all that. You go to their website, they've got 55 plus weekly options. You click, 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 click. From fit and wholesome, family friendly, veggie, or the chef specials, that means the super flavor ones. And then they send you pre-portioned ingredients, right? You prep the vegetables, but the seasons, the spices, the sauces, they're all in packets with the right amount. So you never have to waste any food. It all goes in the pot. And then 20-minute meals, 30 minutes, 30 minutes or less, that's about right. And you've got a delicious dinner. The recipe cards are on these beautiful color, easy to read. I keep those cards. That way, if I ever want to make the recipe again, multiply it up for a party, I've got those cards super easy to read. Need another reason? HelloFresh is 72% cheaper than dining in a restaurant and even cheaper than grocery shopping. That's money back in your pocket, folks. I love it, and I eat with it when I'm at home. Now, here's what you do. Go to HelloFresh.com slash SmokingTire16 and use code SmokingTire16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Right? HelloFresh.com slash smoking tire 16, code smoking tire 16 for 16 free meals across seven boxes and three free gifts. Okay? Okay. HelloFresh is America's number one meal kit. We're also brought to you in part today by Off the Record. You need off the record, folks. You need it. You can get the app or you can go to the website, but trust me, you need it. Tickets are not about safety. Tickets are about taking money from you, transferring it into those with the power to do so. That could be the court, that could be the state, that could be the insurance company, more likely, It's all of the above. If you plead guilty to a ticket, there's fees, administration fees, there's your insurance premiums are gonna go up, not just once, but for a couple of years, you can exit that ecosystem with Off The Record. Off The Record is a service that will match you with a qualified attorney in the area where you got that ticket, could be where you live, could be where you work, could be where you vacation, and they will fight that ticket on your behalf. It is so easy and it's so successful, they have a 97% success rate, and if they don't get the ticket off of your record, you get your money back. It's that straightforward. So go to offtherecord.com slash TST or use code TST10 on the Off The Record app. You download that app, you got it on your phone, you're ready to go. All you do is snap a photo of that ticket and Off The Record is on your side. So go to offtherecord.com slash TST, code TST10 on the Off The Record app. They cover almost every driver in America nationwide and these codes are good for a couple of years, folks. They'll save you 10% on any legal service booked through Off The Record. We love having them as a sponsor. They've been great to us. They've been great to our listeners. I get emails all the time from people who used Off The Record and it worked out. And uh, we're so happy that it did because it'll save you money, it'll save you headache, and uh, there's no downside. Honestly, it's great. But. Uh, on with the show. All right, folks, on this episode, my pal Amelia Hartford is in the studio. Content creator extraordinaire, actor, 
racing driver, builder. She does it all. This bitch got hustle. She works really, really hard, and I love hanging out with her. I don't get to spend enough time with her because she's so busy, as am I, but any chance I get, she's always got a smile on her face. She's always doing something fun. She's got a cute-ass little dog named Uni. Love that shit. It's fire. Amelia Hartford is on the Smoking Tire Podcast. Fuck yeah. Hi. Hello. Hello. Welcome. Thank you. How you doing? Thanks for having me again. Yeah, of course. You're always welcome back. I Thanks for fucking that. finally showing up. <laughs> What's your Hartford Project sweatshirt? Hey, the return to life. Dude, your clothing line is like, you got a whole like thing going on. Yeah. That your, your clothes have like, there's a lot of like things on them. Yes. Like it looks like a race suit. I kind of like that in a way. It's yeah. like, I'll can you, what do all the, what do all the too. things mean though? It's just kind of encompassing a little bit of everything. And the, it's okay to not be okay. It's kind of a tribute to mental health awareness, which sure. is so important. And then the Hartford Project, which is the Hartford brand, Return to Life, um, is more the mental health focus of things. And ideally, I start doing, you know, different messages on different shirts and bringing awareness to it. And so, okay, so what's that? That's just this H? This is H. Just H09. And then my number is number nine. Okay. I joke and say nine seconds changed my life because of the Corvette. Oh, right. That, okay, <laughs> that makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. And then oh, and then you've got the same shit like backwards here. What does that say? Yeah, Los Angeles. Oh, just Los Angeles yeah. upside down. And then a happy face and the globe and then just in two California. Ran, two just random, two random dots. dots. <laughs> so are you doing this yourself or is someone like, I know, we're going to put two random dots on this motherfucker? Um, no, believe Believe it or not, uh, this was designed by my friend Sean and I. Oh, we both just great. sat down, hashed it out. Um, our fulfillment center has an incredible designer who helped kind of put uh, drawn ideas and kind of mm -hmm. what we were thinking onto actual garment. And yeah, are you moving them? Yeah. Oh yeah. Sell a bunch of them. I I was I was completely blown away that the last drop that we did a couple weeks ago sold out in less than twenty four hours. Don't collection. Come on, don't come to my show and say drop. Collection. <laughs> what do you want me to say? There's words you're not allowed to say here. <laughs> drop NFT. <laughs> NFT. So All right, like... so I'm just going to nix that, the <laughs> NFTs I was going to bring up later. Yeah. <laughs> Ew. If you did an NFT, it would be gross. That's cool, though. I like the shirt. I've thought about, we don't want to talk about NFTs. <laughs> of course you've thought about it, because you're like a hustler, and you could probably make a lot of money. But, but it's, it's also, not, it's it's so not about me. It's not about the money. I've, okay, I don't, we don't need to get too deep in NFTs. It's something that I've, you know, I've spent a good amount of time researching, researching, but more because I see it as a form of art and less as a get rich quick thing. Well, how do you separate them? Yeah, that's the ultimate thing, right? And then if it's now, a form of art, just fucking make a JPEG and go, here, everybody, here's a JPEG. <laughs> yeah, Why but is then there got to be an yeah. NFT? I know. I, the NFT part is the scam part. I can see how people feel that way. Yeah. 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 Well, it's how people <laughs> feel that way. Yeah. Well, Gotta a lot leave, of people lost a lot of money as of, yeah. as of recently. Well, because they spent money on things that weren't worth anything, as it turns out. Well, you know, there's up markets and down markets. And, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> up true. Market, down markets, things you paid millions of dollars for that are worth zero, as it turns out. <laughs> you know, things. Yeah. I mean, I was feeling like a lot of people spent, and I'm not trying to defend them at all. I mean, I only have a couple myself, and it was more like- You bought NFTs? I had a couple oh of them. God. I've definitely lost money on them, but I'm going to hang on to them. <laughs> well, of course, because nobody wants them. What, you, what, else, what, what choice do you have? Just hold on to it and hope that it eventually goes up. Yeah, no. what choice do you have? <laughs> Fuck it. Do you have a little LCD monitor that displays it on your fucking wall? Like, like a ticker? No, but I love that. But actually, that's my the real lingering question is, you have a couple of NFTs. Yes. Okay. What do you do with them? <laughs> Cry. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I just... Do you tell them that it's okay to not be okay? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty oh, much look at it. I feel like one day this will be right. But <laughs> your, your board ape is an emotional support animal. <laughs> it's an emotional support animal. <laughs> it's, not, it's not monkey related, is it? What do you're you know? NFTs no, no, not, no, 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 no. It's not that. No, I, I, I and I'm going to say invest in like World of Women's and Boss Beauties and and things that were actually like in a way also trying to give back to the community. Yeah, did they give back to somebody? <laughs> the question is who? <laughs> <laughs> who got given back to? I'm just curious about that. Yeah, I'll TBD. I'll let you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> when the market rebounds, we're yeah. going to give something back. I swear. <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't mean to just like start a show like No, you're good. Shit, we just went straight into it. <laughs> some, I mean, I hear NFTs and I just see fucking red yeah. so fast. We have And we have an artist coming on the show, this dude, uh, Ash Thorpe, who designs cars. Do you follow this guy on Instagram? He's good. I don't. Pretty big Instagram follow him. He does like digital, digital concept cars. And he designed the Batmobile, the current like Batmobile. Okay. 
That's so cool. Yeah, and uh, and he's got he has some NFTs, but he's like he's like like a digital artist. Like that's his whole job. Mm -hmm. And so he was. I was talking to him, and he was kind of you know defending it as a way for people to buy legitimate digital art which like sure. all right i get but it's like they're ruining it for you bro <laughs> you know, like you're you're it's got it's forever attached to uh to scammy people losing garbage. money yeah. yeah yeah well if you if someone has an audience right as you do mm -hmm. or snoop dog does or who the fuck ever then people will pay an outsized amount of money to get the thing because it came from that celebrity right well now they've got the thing and the celebrity's no longer hyping it. And now it's just you, Dave, over here with this thing and no power to hype it for the next person. Yeah, I mean I think I think there's still plenty of celebrities who still have their their NFTs and they're hanging on to them and no, the well, only no, hopes that it eventually bounces back. No, I don't mean celebrities that are buying them. I mean like the celebrities the are selling them because yeah, it's theirs, yeah. yeah but I'm yeah. also I and again, it sounds like I'm defending this a lot when I'm really not that huge of an advocate for, for them, but like I also feel there's plenty of people who are still hanging on to them and hodling oh, their sure. NFTs. Even Bro, though. there's bitches with beanie babies. <laughs> like, it's coming back around! Wait, did you see the, the couple getting divorced and having to separate their beanie babies I have in seen, court? I have seen such a clip. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. And if I it's not that, it's other young, worthless garbage, My grandmother too. collected beanie babies and was like, one day these are going to be worth gold. <laughs> one day these are going to be all yours! Yeah. You know, all right, fine. Thanks, Grandma. <laughs> it'll, yeah. be a, it'll be a dog bed one day, or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, look, and I collect dumb shit. I mean, forget cars and like watches and things that are have some value. I've got, I have shit that like somebody told. I got magic cards, yo. <laughs> you collect magic cards? <laughs> Not like currently, but the magic cards I had when I was a teenager, okay. I still have. I wish I still had my Pokemon cards. I think some Pokemon cards are, are actually worth some money. In worth fact, some magic cards are worth some money too. I have a couple magic cards. What do that magic are cards consist of? fucking cards just regular cards that you yeah they're do cards magic with no 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 like the game magic <laughs> oh i don't oh. i've never oh. played magic do you know what magic the I gathering know, is no i have no like idea a, <laughs> it's like a, it's like a nerd did i just date myself uh, you dated us uh, you, you dated right? us a little bit yeah funny. no it's like a it's like a nerd game it's like almost okay. like a dungeons and dragons okay. kind of thing and it's like it's like casting spells and summoning monsters and shit like oh, that, that but the, cool. the, the, you you play with a deck of cards they're not like spades yeah. hearts clubs it's like they're cards that have like when the you characters. said magic i was thinking no no like... you're right if you didn't magic the gathering cards oh yeah. funny yeah, yeah when when i was young we played with Yu-Gi-Oh and pokemon right right so yeah. that was like a couple years behind me we were yeah. we were pogs remember do you, remember, do you know what those are no yeah see here's the old <laughs> pogs were fucking stupid as hell but man did we love them shits they were little discs uh -huh. like that were probably as thick as this coaster and made of like cardboard okay and you would stack them like you'd make a literally make a stack and then you'd have something called a slammer okay. that was a metal uh, disc that was like sort of like a th silver dollar but like a little bit thicker uh -huh. and you would bounce the fucking slammer and you'd have to like fl it, and, and the number of things that would fl it was a stupid game but because you were like throwing things around the room fucking huh. schools got all out of sorts about it and they banned them all right? they were like poker chips that weren't worth money yeah, that was the <laughs> yeah basically yeah. yeah that's what magic the gathering cards look like oh. they're actually pretty cool because they have really cool like artwork on them like an NFT. Um, <laughs> exactly, Zach. Yeah. They have they actually the the art is like it's like hand drawn or hand painted artwork and I used to really be into the art. That's and I so cool. when I was like thirteen, I wrote letters to a bunch of the artists really? and sent in my cards and got the artist to sign cards. So I had a I have a binder oh, so full cool. of cards that are signed by the artist, which is actually kind of kind of neat. I mean nerdy, but but neat. It looks, and so, oh yeah, that's really cool. So you got, I mean, some cards, uh, you know, I got a couple cards that are worth like a few hundred dollars, but there's some cards that are worth like thousands mm -hmm. and thousands of dollars. So anyway, it's some real nerd shit. I want to play it. P uh, Post Malone is doing like some kind of, um, I don't know, it's in collab, it's, it's with some content like not like a make a wish thing but some one of those companies that like puts on contests mm -hmm. and you could enter to win uh to play uh uh post malone magic the gathering for 100 g's 
There's literally, wow. there, yeah, it's All like right, you entered a win cool. and you. <laughs> I think it's uh, dude. Here so in Magic, much. that's a and, fun thing to and do. They're live, I think they're. Li oh, it's the company that's that's like live streaming it. It's like a live streaming thing and whatever the fuck. But yeah, nerdy, nerdy yeah. shit. But those I people spent a lot of money on them, and most of them are worth fucking nothing too. So you yeah, know. Well, a lot of people spend. You got money any baseball on a lot cards? You too. You're too. No. You're too young for baseball cards, right? Yeah, no yeah. baseball cards. Yeah. Other than, is the NFTs the stupidest thing you've collected? <laughs> <laughs> well, Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh yeah. cards, cars. Yeah, ca I mean, cars. <laughs> yeah, your cars are not appreciating assets yet. Uh, I I mean... Maybe. Yeah, I, I, I've... You uh, probably sell the Ferrari I've, for more than you paid for yeah, it. Yeah, I think I I have... Um, I've, I would net positive on most all the cars. You think so? Yeah, I can't think of a single one yet. Yeah. I don't know. You set the Mustang on fire. No, that was the Corvette. But then I got an offer for like two twenty. Really? For the vet. Dump that motherfucker! What? Are you kidding me? I'm. Did you sell? No, I didn't sell oh it. Oh my god! You got to sell it for two twenty? That mind you, that was like that's a your year ago. That, oh, that was crazy. that was right after breaking oh, the yeah, world yeah. record with right. it. Someone offered that money. Someone was like, "I just sold my NFTs. <laughs> what am I gonna buy?" <laughs> and like I, I definitely thought yeah. about it, but I was like, There's... that was when it was the only nine second Corvette. Um, only sub nine five, oh if I remember. God. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, you should have taken that money and run. I thought about it, but then I didn't yeah. want to. It's a race car. I don't want to sell a race car to some someone, you know. Oh, dude, fucking right, <laughs> written, written release, bro. <laughs> As is no warranty, my friend. Yeah. And I was like, I like the car. I want to go out there and keep chasing records. I was so focused on we're gonna put her in the sub eights or in the eights, and and we're still working on that goal. I almost drove her today, and then I got in the car this morning. I was like, oh, there's no AC. That you took the AC out of that car? No, but every time you pull the engine, you have to, you know. Oh. Yeah. Recharge it, yeah. and you just oh, don't. Oh wow. Because <laughs> I'm like, the engine's gonna come out again soon, and then oh, I get lazy. Wow. And, yeah. yeah, that could be annoying. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, that's unintended consequences of tuning modern cars. Yeah, I mean, recharge but it's just a recharge, and if I did it, it'd be fine. And you should I probably could. get like sponsored by one of those AC charging. I machines. should just have it at the shop. Yeah. yeah. Yes. I should just have it at the shop. If you're pulling an engine every month, yeah, <laughs> it's hot here. Get a fucking machine. You can put AC in other shit. Put AC in that Buick of yours. Is that a Buick or an Oldsmobile? What's that G body? Uh, Buick. Is yeah. it Buick? Yeah. 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 Buick Regal. Yeah. Is and that I your have, grandma's car or something? Yeah, yeah. That's hilarious. The 79 was. And then I just got an 87, which is like... You got another one? Yeah. Why? <laughs> because I love them so much. They're, those cars are like... They're, it's so funny. Something about the shape of the, that car I, is so like charming. I know. I don't know why. Yeah. and it's But at the same time, it's also an acquired taste because not a lot of people are as into them, especially that era. You know, a lot of people are like, oh... You know, Camaro or Mustang, and who was like, Buick. well, the Fox body too. I like the notchback. It's something about that squared off body. Yeah, it's like yeah. so, so 80s. I love it. Yeah. So, uh, maybe it's, I think if we were playing Are You Garbage right now, we would be garbage for fucking, <laughs> for liking the, because I was just, I just put something on Twitter that was like, like the Grand National. Yeah. It's like, a hundred percent attitude, no substance, terrible to drive. And like, why do I want one anyway? I don't know. Yeah. So I have those. So they're like brass knuckles, though. It, it's like you're not ever going to use it, but they're just kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's the 79. The other G body, it's kind of like a, it's a fake GNX. It has all the yeah. badges. It looks pretty. And I wanted to get one thinking I was going to swap over the engine from the 79 into it. And then the cage wasn't in the condition that I, I was hoping it to be in. So then I was oh, you like, bought it with a cage. Yeah. yeah. And at that point, I was like, well, do I really want to go to the trouble of ripping everything out? So now I'm just using it as a daily. <laughs> so I with have a, a daily for my daily for my daily. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you're, you're daily a caged car. Be careful. Yeah. Why? Because I want you to hit your head on the bar and I die. Could, yeah. Even where there, it's padded and and I where I sit, to... I'd have to like roll. Pr it's harnesses. Okay. I hear you. Maybe people I'm have died. convincing myself. People well, harnesses are dangerous that. on the street, too. If you don't have Hans, you can, you know, hit, yeah. touch your neck. But if you're you in stop-and-go like, traffic. You, don't you have, like, a Bronco? I just sold it. Oh, you did? Oh, okay. And then I saw your Braptor here. I was like, fuck, why did it's I cool. sell it? It looks so cool. Yeah, you should can just... you talk about it? Are you allowed to talk to yeah. it? Or you embargoed? No, no, no. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How was it? It's fun as fuck. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's real good. Zach and On 37's I, factory. Well, yeah. Those fenders are so, like, good looking. The it's, it's, I love it. It is a wide boy. Yeah. Um, it's funny because, you know, like all, like a lot of other like super wide body cars, you know, the cab is narrow and then the fucking wheels are way out there. So when you're, I'm pulling it into my garage, <laughs> it's like kind of tricky actually. Yeah. You have to like, like almost lean out the window. Yeah. And, like, Cause you look. almost can't see the corner of the fender where you're yeah. sitting. Yeah. And, it, and it's got those, the, 
those like helicopter handles on the corners, uh-huh. you know, like yeah. which on the regular Bronco really help you place where it is. <laughs> but the fucking wheel is nowhere near that on this thing. Are those handles for helicopters? I thought that was because the to- the capacity of that's like a hundred yeah, no, pounds. I, I call them for, that. Okay. But like, that's I'm what pretty sure that's just for like strapping your canoe on the. Yeah, road yeah they or know something. they are. If okay. it was, if that was a Hummer, if it was an H one, yeah, it would be, be helicopter handles. Yeah. But I just call them that. But don't fucking hang your hum- <laughs> Don't hang your Bronco. <laughs> Oh, no, if you do, film it, we you do it. yeah. If you do, maybe you're like Stradman or something. I don't know. Maybe, maybe you're like rich boy YouTuber. Like I don't know. But like, uh, it, it it's tough to park into a garage. I will say that it's yeah. really really wide. But it, we were just up in the desert this morning. And do you it, jump it? Do you get air? We didn't. I mean, probably a one, little bit. One place a little bit, but there's no like jump jump. But mm-hmm. we were doing whoops and drifts a, and all kinds of stuff. It's the three liter V6? Yep. Yeah. 10 speed? Yep. Yeah. Okay. And so the, probably the, better for the whoops, maybe, going fast? Everything we did with it was very at home very doing yeah. fast Baja stuff, which is kind of like, you know, they say it's inspired by the Ultra 4 racing, which is high speed desert running and then you slow down for rock crawling and then you high speed desert run and you slow down. And like, yeah. it does all those things, but it feels, it feels at home doing that like 40 to 70 mile an hour through the dirt yeah. and the dynamics feel like a rally car and it soaks up bumps really well like oh, it was so really cool. good I yeah. thought it was really good at drifting as well yeah really good at drifting oh that's cool um, you know unlike the the Jeep 392 mm-hmm. you can put it in rear wheel drive um, and lock the diff and you know full off lock diff rear drive and then it's just like super slidey machine mm-hmm. I we have to figure out like I'm uncomfortable with like where to find a good jump? Like, I don't know how to do the math on the jump. Did you see me jump my Bronco? Yes, I did. <laughs> that was and so that, fun. Uh, and, but, like, I wouldn't have looked at that jump and gone, yeah, no, I, know, I see what to do here. You know, I, I would end up breaking some shit. Yeah, I also went with someone who's very familiar with the valley. That's what you Where need. we went, where they were like, this is where people jump. Right. Hit, hit it, it straight. Yeah, hit it straight <laughs> yeah. at 42 miles an hour yeah, or yeah, whatever. Yeah. Like, without that type of guidance, like, yeah. On a borrowed truck, like I don't want to make that phone call. Like, hey, uh, yeah, that's your the shit's thing. in half and the wheels are over there. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? I agree. I with know. That. On a yeah. press car, you know, I want to be that person to make the phone call. So uh, here's the coordinates. Of we where filmed we are. that Baja 911 near where we were today, and what we thought were whoops turned into a jump because oh, TJ yeah. was going so fast. But I was like, well, looking through the lens, going, oh, this is a jump now. Yeah, like, we don't really want to surprise ourselves like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's I do want to jump. Things. It, I think. Yeah. Um, but. I mean, what a what a nice truck. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's it's just it's basically really good at everything except fuel economy. It's horrible at that. Is it? Uh, I just looked at it for a second outside. Was it the hard top or the soft top? Hard top. Hard top. Um, yeah. Can you get a the wrap? I think all the, only the hard yeah. all the Raptors are four door question. hard top. Yeah, I know there are four doors. I wasn't sure about the hard top. Hard top. So yeah. in theory, it's, it's quieter. That's what theory, I wanted to ask. Yeah. I, it's still pretty loud. It's well, not... the soft top when and don't get I I actually really liked the Bronco when I had it and I was kind of sad that I sold it when I did, um, but I had an opportunity. I thought, why not? Um, and the only thing was how loud the soft top was. I I picked up my mom from the airport and the whole drive home I couldn't hear her because yeah. we couldn't have a we couldn't hold the conversation. Yeah. But and, and again, I had wanted the hard top. I had wanted the V six, and in order to get the the truck sooner, I wasn't able to do that. Well, so. they had the recall on the tops. Yeah. 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 I think so they've sorted why. that, but it's the, still the pretty hard loud. tops aren't quiet either. It's I mean, still pretty loud. Yeah. Huh. yeah. Yeah, and just because I've heard opposite, I've heard too. the hard top makes it. Well, yeah, you're on 37. Well, it's better than soft tops, but it's <laughs> yeah. still it's still like yeah, it's not it's not a defender. It's not like a it's not like a refined experience. Yeah, I guess mine was 37s with the soft top. So yeah. if you want all things going against you there. <laughs> yeah, it's loud. But this thing, the geometries are really good, and it, mm-hmm. it handles all kinds of cool stuff, and and it's got all the different modes work really good, and it's fun as fuck. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's really you know what now that all the cars are like so fast, you know, and and the, the difference between what a car can do and what the speed limits are. Yeah. You know, like the the desert is like it's nice to go to a place where there's just no fucking rules at all. Oh yeah, I can see why people love it so much. Yeah. Oh well, great. Yeah. Yeah, they'll sell a shitload of them. Yeah. And that green is nice. It's got yeah, a very color pretty is color. So pretty. Yeah. It's called like, is it like emerald explosion or something <laughs> like that. It's called. Wait, like, I <laughs> this is a weird pastime that I sometimes do. I just Google car color names. Okay. Because I find them so fascinating. Yeah, and, they're really interesting. And it's funny to see like what people, what the designers come up with for the names of them. Sometimes the name of green is even worse than you thought. 
It is eruption green. <laughs> uh, the, the colors are hot eruption pepper red, green. cyber <laughs> orange, area 51. Yeah, I love that orange, one. Yeah. Code orange, uh, Which, iconic what, silver. What's area 51? It, uh, it's like a blue gray color. Oh, if like, I remember like correctly. battleship gray? Like a f- yeah, kind oh, okay. of. Less blue, but yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like the chalk blue gray. Okay, yeah. yeah. Um, and it comes with some conspiracy papers if you order. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and the rest are just funny. But eruption green. Eruption green. Eruption I read green. it on the, I, on the key this morning, and I read it. I I rolled my eyes, and I was like, <laughs> "Of course, there's something that's like jizzing." Let your Baja <laughs> dreams come to fruition. <laughs> I wasn't gonna say it. But <laughs> Porsche just sent me some ice cream. I keep forgetting to bring it in. They, they sent you ice cream? They sent me ice cream that was like, um, they were like, we realized our paint to sample colors sound like ice cream. So we <laughs> collaborated with some ice cream company <gasps> and made ice cream I love in the flavors of the of the colors. That's a creative idea. Yeah. So the other uh. night I tried like the mint green one and it was fucking delicious. What's chalk white taste like? <laughs> <laughs> it tastes like Tums. <laughs> like, yeah. it's like, like Pepto-Bismol. Oh, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, pretty cool. That was what it was. But one of them, uh, one of them is Frozen Berry Metallic, which is the color oh. of my car. I tried Macadamia Metallic, and it was fire. Yeah, I And bet. mint green, also fire. And yeah, Frozen Berry Metallic is the color of my car. Oh, by the way, yes. update on my car. I okay. find myself very conflicted right now. Why? Because I've been waiting a year for my Porsche. The one right? at the bottom of the ocean? First one went down on the boat. Okay. They, I got supposedly the first Boxster Spider to be rebuilt from the boat cars. Okay. Suppose, how the fuck would I follow up on that? Yeah. I have no idea. But the boat went down in February. The replacement car was done in June. Okay. So pretty quick turnaround, right? So it was supposed to leave Germany on July 8th. Okay. Okay. And they said, yeah, it'll be here by the end of July. Yesterday, August the 4th, mm-hmm. I hadn't heard anything from my dealer. And I was like, I didn't want to be a dick. And I got things to do, so I didn't really give a shit. But I called the guy and I was like, hey, man, what's up with my car? It has not left Germany yet. Really? And it is not expected to leave Germany until August 30th. Ooh. And this is because the dock workers are on strike oh, <laughs> in no. Germany. And part of me is like, yeah, fuck the man. <laughs> Don't cross the picket line. Get your fucking money. You know, the shipping companies are making money and screwing over the dock workers. Like, mm-hmm. fuck that. Don't cross the picket line. And then I'm like, but maybe but, you could yeah, send just let this, one by. Maybe you could send this one car. <laughs> it's fucking sitting there in Germany. Oh no, it sucks. Well, it's only a few months away. I mean, whatever. At this been point, waiting a yeah, year, you've waited for so shit. long. <laughs> like, damn it! I know. So close. <laughs> so close. So yet close. So far. <laughs> but like, uh, in 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 theory and in practice, I'm with the dock workers on this one. But damn it, their, say, timing, you want to be their scab. timing fucking sucks. I'm not. I'm not scabbing. <laughs> But I'm like, I'm also kind of like, what if I did European delivery? <laughs> like, what if I just go get it and put it on a plane? Can Ship it back yeah. over, over to Europe, then go get yeah. it, then bring it back. Are you crossing the picket line if you take a car out and put it on a plane? Does that count as crossing the picket line? Just if... helicopter in, grab it, bring there it you go. to it. Yeah. Mr. Claw. <laughs> Does it have helicopter hooks? You just drive board? it on a ramp. Oh, dude. Did you see me helicoptering in my be... 458 when I took delivery of it? Yeah. yeah. That's, that's a pretty good move. Yeah, you just drive it on a little thingy and you're good. Who paid for that? Motul? eBay, right? Uh, oh, eBay? eBay? Yeah. Nice. Were you Look like, at you. Good memory. I saw that after our eBay thing, and I was like, she had, she had like, a good time with eBay money, so did we. Yeah. <laughs> we, we, had, yeah. we had different creative ideas. Yeah. Um, You're getting your money's worth out of that car, though. Uh, yeah. That, yeah. That Motul commercial looks nice. I am so excited for that. It's cool. And every, it just like, and you know, you're going to go shoot a commercial. You're a little fearful of what if someone hits me driving to the film location? What happens if you blow the engine? You know, yeah. you've redlined it too many times. What happens if something in the suspension breaks? Or you pop a tire and you don't have another set of wheels and you only have four hours to shoot, so then you have to go to a tire shop and hope they do it quickly. But fortunately, like everything went smoothly so perfectly that like. Isn't Moto like the official oil of Ferrari? Uh, or is it? Oh, it must be Shell. Right I don't. Now. Yeah, I think it's Shell. I don't. I say Ferrari would really have f- not a good time seeing a modified. So we car. we um we're 
it's funny. A lot of my comments are always about Ferrari cease and desist that, cease and desist this. But we're actually we're very respectful. We blacked out the badges. We like we didn't even want them trying to contact us <laughs> for saying hilarious. we're using their name and their likeness because that wasn't our intent at all. We just wanted to you know so drift you just put a super black car. tape on all we the badges. Have, yeah, there's black tape on all the it's badges. Hilarious. I still have it on the badges. I never took it off. It's pretty. <laughs> funny. You know what? I almost drove it today so you can see it. If there was ever a Corvette that you could do that and people would be confused about what kind of car it is, it's this generation. Yeah. So Six, whenever I work. go somewhere with my Corvette, people think it's a Ferrari. Exactly. Whenever I go somewhere with my Ferrari, people think it's a Corvette. Dude, there's a, I, I there's a guy around the corner uh, uh. from here who's, who's got a McLaren 720. Okay. And it's in that, that light blue color. Uh -huh. Yeah. Um, and and he's a friend of mine, and he stops in once in a while, and we chat. And it, the, he got he got he traded his he got the 720 Spider, and he came in and he goes, man, this car's just cool as fuck. But people keep asking me if it's a vet, and it's driving me insane. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. But that's oh, a tale okay. as old as time. When I was working at the rental car company back in 05, yeah. and I and we got the. Um, the Ferrari 430 had uh -huh. just come out, oh, and cool. we were driving them around. I got stopped and asked if that was the new Mustang. Because people really? just, yeah, well, people saw the horse, and people were dumb as rocks. Oh, interesting. So it's like, you know. Yeah. And and if I had paid for that car, I'd be like, ugh, really? <laughs> Could you so, imagine everywhere you go? Is that a Mustang? Ugh. Yeah. Well, it's, I mean, now it's really with the with the vets. Like, it's, yeah. it's really happening. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait for the Z06 to come. You're getting one, right? Oh, yeah. And my order went in on the 28th, the day that it opened, and just hoping that... You one of like 20,000 at the fucking dealer, or you got, this, you got the someone to take care of you there? I, I got someone, yeah, yeah. Who's, who's taking good care of me, who's helping out a it lot. It looks like it's going to be very nice. I'm really excited for it. Yeah. And yeah. you drove it, and you can't tell anybody what it's like, right? Um, I actually get my press car next week, but I'm embargoed to say anything until October. Oh, yeah. Yeah. They have a press car next week? Uh, oh, when get, does this podcast go live car. at? <laughs> well, I'm driving it. I'm driving it for a performance car of the year uh, for Road and Track. So oh, I'm, cool. I'm stoked. So I'm, I'm, when are you I'm doing that? Third week of September. Okay. Yeah, it's like well, it's pre-embargo. Well, when I see you in Monterey, you'll see the car. Oh, you're bringing it to Monterey? Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. That'll be fun. Yeah. That's a good Monterey car. Yeah. Going real slow in traffic. <laughs> It'll be comfy. You might have to rescue me from the side of the road if my Ferrari 328 breaks down. I got you. Just <laughs> let me know. <laughs> no, that's going to be excellent. Yeah. I'm excited yeah. for it. it sounds yeah. really good. I've heard the video clips. Yeah. It, sound, it sounds like a fucking 458, pretty yeah. much. I mean, naturally aspirated, flat plane crank V8. Yeah. High revving. That's what they sound like, as yeah. it turns out. Yeah. Yeah, that's real cool. Yeah. I think you're going to get bored of your other Corvette once you have that thing. I don't know. Then that that begs the whole question: Do we just swap the engine and the Stingray and just go full race car fu standalone and send it and see what time we can beat, or do I do I keep the LT2 in it with the DCT and? Um, I mean, it's always going to have to have some transaxle of some sort. But yeah. um, do we continue to try and push records that way and hope that tuning solution becomes available? Uh, I mean, I mean, if you're asking me, I don't know exactly. But if you're asking me, I think for someone like yourself, you get the most social media media carry out of a new platform. Yeah, yeah. So like being the first C8 to do nine or nine five or whatever it is, mm -hmm. whatever the number is exactly, to get from that to the amount of money and time and effort it would take to get from that to the eights yeah. versus being the first of some new thing to get into the nines, that would be, you'd probably get more out of that. Yeah. That yeah. Corvette made it, that Corvette earned itself a living, didn't it? Have oh, you yeah. hit a wall with tuning it? Is that what you're, you're referring to? Um, or, or with walls? <laughs> <laughs> that. You haven't done that, which no, is good. No, no, not yet, which is good. Um, the engine, we've been able to find a way to trick the car to be happy enough to put down the horsepower we want it to. Um, but where we really struggle is getting the car to shift under load. Um, so we, you know, if, if we could put the transmission on a full standalone, that would be ideal. We're not there yet. And then it's like, I mean, sure, we, we build and race cars, but we also do YouTube, you know, how much... Um, um, R and D do we want to do to create a standalone that will never sell mm -hmm. for a car? So it's just yeah. kind of trying to take a day at a time to figure out. You'd have to be Rob Dom. Only Rob Dom would do that kind of research for zero return. 
<laughs> well, because he wants to do it just to do it. He's yeah. Like, he, yeah. That's his own mental well, reward. Well, he has the crashed CA, doesn't he? Um, I think he does, right? That's the yeah. one he wants to put a rotary in eventually? Yeah, yeah, oh. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Rob Dom, making cars that. worse just because. <laughs> yeah, he's got a yeah, Rex C8. Eventually, he's going to put a rotary in that. Um, you know, I don't know. He just likes doing the science experiments, which is really cool. Sure. Yeah, that is cool. Yeah, that, I mean, what are your what are your transmission options? We're trying to figure out what we want to do. Because we've upgraded the clutches, which in theory should, you know, hold more pressure. We're also commanding more clutch pressure as well through a controller. Um but it's really just trying to get it to to shift under so much torque, and that's the biggest thing. So, if you had to replace that, does some who make does like X Track or somebody or like there's, make a transaxle? There is a company that I've cold reached out to that I won't say on the podcast that uh-huh. I'm hoping we're able to kind of figure something out. But in theory, you wouldn't think that like it'd be that difficult to do a transaxle like a of like auto power glide of some sort, you know? But I don't know. Hmm. You're kind of who does the, the like for the turbo Huracans and stuff? Who does their gearboxes? Uh, Dotson does the gears Dotson. and the clutches for those, but that's just the gear and the clutches. Oh, that's it. Yeah. Really? Oh, they're so they're running I, like twenty five hundred horsepower. With the, the Super Trofeo runs a sequential, but I don't think that would be good to launch off the line at you know hmm. peak boost. And most of them are are they mostly running standing miles, so they're not as cr- yeah uh, they roll into roll it, into right? It, yeah. yeah. Okay. But even I'm and I'm not I'm not Lamborghini World. Um, I have a friend who builds them, and from what I know, they're still using the. The factory housings and just upgrading the the gears and the clutches. Mm. I guess because yeah. they're not doing the launches, they probably can. Yeah, it doesn't without that slam. Some launch, can... but I. What's the fastest uh, um, Lambo Audi? I think Quarter it's mile? eight seconds, or I it might know, be high yeah. sevens now. Really? Yeah. I don't know. Zach will find out shortly. I'm sure. Huh. That's, I mean... And it's the second faster than what we're doing. I mean, yeah. I'll, more credit, it's probably second and a half, but, but it's yeah. also, are they, they're all running all-wheel drive. All drive cars all-wheel as drive, well. Yeah. yeah, that helps. Um, yeah. Some Lambo in March ran a 7.275. Ooh, okay, so that's faster than what fast. I was thinking. That's pretty uh, fast. Uh, pretty fast, yeah. yeah. That's, yeah. That's, that's big power. Yeah. yeah. Maybe the record I'm thinking is the stock bottom end. Yeah. Yeah, maybe that's when, that's 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 when you start, when you got to start asterisking <laughs> yeah i know but like you said like you know, these, just, these like, folks might have put in a whole, totally bespoke gearbox and system and controller and because that's what they want to do is set that record and you guys do youtube and have other projects <laughs> so like you said it's like how much time and money can you put into the r d for this yeah, thing? yeah. and yeah. Then, listen at the end of the day it's fun so we're going to continue to do it and see what we can come of it but yeah yeah is that fucking 79 quicker though uh I haven't driven it quicker because uh. I keep popping the belt off. <laughs> <laughs> but we got a belt that we're actually going to. I haven't announced this yet, but whoever listens silly. to the podcast that can so hear cool. that we're going to be uh, putting a power glide in that. So right now it's a T56. Oh, so, yeah, that's not going to work for that. Yeah, so we're going to be putting a, um, a power glide. And I really feel that we could possibly get her in the low nines, if not the eights. That's funny. Yeah. Add ass. Yeah. The thing so looks the Bronx. It used to take, Remember how it used to take oh, yeah. so much to get those to oh, get a car yeah. into the fucking eights yeah. i mean that car literally has fire coming out of the hood <laughs> like it doesn't even have a hood and like the engine is like so much bigger than that yeah can the we talk about mu- your psychotic mustang so i i don't watch your videos because <laughs> i don't have dog. time and i'm sure you understand that totally what is the intent of this amazing crazy thing is uh, this like this just it almost looks like burnout contest in australia to me it but does and that wasn't the, the intent the behind it i am yeah, my dog's on the scoops um, I just had this vision of doing this like root style blower, big block something in a modern car. I like and, it. And yeah, it ended up being the Mustang, which I I couldn't have been more stoked with how it came out. Does um, it have to be that tall? Yes. Or did you By choice. I might make you it taller. Made it, you just <laughs> made it that tall intentionally, right? <laughs> yeah, and that's without an intercooler. Yeah. We don't need one, but we could easily put one in like, just to make it Like, are there just like taller. spacers just to make it taller? Like, <laughs> no, 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 like, no. Do you have motor mounts that could like lift the motor like a couple inches extra? <laughs> I know, right? Like, I really wanted it to be taller than the roof of the car. It is. It is it crazy. Is. I think, yeah. I mean, at least in this photo, and that looks like it's on about the right angle. Yeah, no, it's, it's, uh, it's there. And it does do... <laughs> Huge burnouts. I mean, it's well, better. I think what? there's a video of a burnout actually too. This volcano gets hot when it spews lava. I mean, like no shit. 
is yeah. I mean, it the, has a six second capable transmission inside of it too so <sighs> it's she's dialed she's ready to go need to upgrade the suspension need a roll cage oh um, yeah <laughs> yeah what? is that like a full interior right yeah. now yeah it's silly as fuck <laughs> so what what are the plans with this like cage it and then do drag racing and yeah, just set new records racing. for yourself yeah that'd be you know that's I didn't know you liked the drag racing that much I enjoy it I really do I love all, road did racing. Did you always I like, like drag racing that much? I thought the Corvette was like a thing to do it, but I didn't realize you'd then buy seven drag cars. <laughs> um, I really, so I was really, I really love drifting and I still love drifting. And then I was um, asked to do the fastest car show. So then we turned the 240 drift car into a drag car. And although I didn't win, spoiler alert, um, I had a great time doing it. And then when the vet came around, we we're like, okay. Let's see what we can do on the quarter mile. Let's just have fun. We took it out there, and we were like two tenths of a second off of the record after putting nitrous on the car. So we're like, what can we keep doing? And it just kind of just got into this like spiral of, well, if we do this, we can do this. And oh, cool, but if we try this, we can do that. And then just constantly shaving off time. It's kind of like addicting. And then when you feel G's on launch, that was something that I hadn't fully experienced until doing the driving the C8 on the track. And to do like a 1360 foot is something that I feel like everyone should experience in their life and one day I hope I can do a sub 160 foot which is like bonkers but yeah I just I, I really grew to love that and I still do road racing I still do drag racing or uh, drifting but but yeah it's also easy for content it's e true it's you know when you watch drifting when you when you watch road racing it's the audience almost wants something that it's easy to understand what the goal is you can right. do it in 10 seconds then it's problem solving why don't we do it that and, makes more sense and it's the Actually. audience loves it you know i love it i I've, I've really i love it dearly and it's just kind of i'm glad that it worked out and it makes it makes a lot of sense from a content perspective because yeah. like launch lights yeah you know what i mean like versus like road racing they in two hate, minutes the audience hate lap time. fucking it's like, road racing the it's content like, is yeah. terrible it's like how do you know that in turn three you were like yeah coming out of you exited a little too soon or yeah. apexed at the wrong time so and, and yeah two minutes of opportunity for the audience to say find ways that you were imperfect yeah. as well right yeah and that's only the audience that understands what you're doing you know yeah, the, the yeah. mass audience is going okay sure left yeah. right and then they, they check out They're, they need the hook you know yeah our track content doesn't perform our yeah. road course content at all. I mean, like literally, I I drove went and drove a fucking cup car at the fastest road course in North America, and like people were like, eh, whatever. Yeah, it's just not. I hate to say it, but yeah, but it's oh, funny that, to, that you started drag racing with something that is actually so effective, oh, and no, then you and then you've went back and built some like old school style, like you kind of made it harder on yourself. Uh, like you think if your goal was actually to run like a sub 160 foot, you'd just go buy a fucking GTR or something. Oh, um, I don't, I mean, it'd be expensive, you know. I guess, but aren't these giant engines expensive? Yeah, I don't, I don't know what the fastest GTR 60 foot is. A sub one is ridiculous. That's, that's really fast. I think, I mean, I think you, I mean, you can get like. I mean, if you have like a 2,000 horsepower R35. Yeah. yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't know what the 60 foot is you, of those. I'm, I mean, I don't either, but you can get but them. I could but go they down go there. really fucking yeah. fast. The, the 60 foot world record, this says a 1.226, and the GTR ran on to run an 8.4. Oh. Yeah. Wow, right. so a sub one is insane. Sub yeah, one is like, like a. Like, so all like drive doesn't matter at that point. It's just all rear rear hookup, I assume. It's, it's, get, it's getting up and going. Right. Yeah. I don't um, know if you're going to do that with a fucking 2015 Mustang. Well, you know, <laughs> if sounds, I was really... Sounds like you need a pro street car or something for that. Pretty much. Yeah. If, if I really wanted to, like, let's be honest, Supercharger, if I wanted to go really fast, I would have done turbos. Yeah. And maybe down the line we end up going that route because that's just, you know, it's for drag racing, It's you'll see better numbers because there's an efficiency thing there. But um, yeah, at least for right now. Yeah, that I... blower probably takes 150 horsepower to spin. <laughs> right? So it did um, at 3K RPM, 1,000 foot pounds of torque. Oh, that's pretty Woo! cool. Fucking insane. That's pretty yeah. cool. And just for so for context, this other, fa the fastest GTR in the world ran yeah. a 6.725. Okay. And I believe looking at it, it's just rear wheel drive. Like it, really? It's, yeah. Because wow. the, the rears are big and fat and the fronts are kind of skinny. Wow. Um, 
And that's What's the thing that's like 25. It doesn't have the 60 foot. Yeah. This makes like 2,500 to 3,000 horsepower. Ooh, that'd be fun so what drive. power will your Mustang make if, if you turned all the things up? We're, we're building a, a 2,000 horsepower capable engine right now. We were before, and then we knew uh, that the um, the valve springs probably weren't going to be strong enough, and go figure, they weren't. We ended up maxing out at like 800. So, so we're, that you started with like a crate engine and put that blower on it, right? Basically. Um, I actually bought a used race engine oh, from a okay. shop. Yeah. Oh. Nice. Yeah. 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 Now we know why we it was used. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now we know why they sold it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after the first, you know, when we dynoed it, it seemed okay. And I bought it from someone I trusted. I knew it had some wear on it. Um, and we were all pretty. What was it in before? I think a Nova uh-huh. is, was what they had it in before, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, you know, it was built to be naturally aspirated and you throw a big old supercharger on it. What do you Uh, expect? So, and we knew it didn't have the spring that it needed in order to, to really go the way we wanted it to go. So we took it to the dyno and confirmed that theory. So we're like, well, we could tear everything apart, but we're like, why don't we only do Like take it to the drag strip once if we're going to do that. So we took it out and yeah, bent a rod and decided to, yeah. Well, it, how, well, how toasted is the rest of it? We uh, spun a bearing. Okay. We thought we spun a rod bearing, and we had we did bend a couple rods, but uh, because of the spun bearing, we spun a um, a main bearing. The crank was actually um, it's an externally balanced engine. Um, we think that the crank what had been mean? misaligned in some point. Essentially, I'm still I'm still learning the externally balanced. That that the, means? the machine shop handled it. Um, it's like that's like when you balance how you balance, balance a wheel and tire, right? Like you'd put little weights. They put on weights the, on, on the, the flywheel. On the, end ca- oh, on the flywheel, yeah, you have right? a harmonic balancer or on the flywheel yeah. flex yeah. plate to balance yeah. it, yeah. Yeah. Instead so, of having it just in the crank. Yeah. yeah. So it was balanced. Now it's going to be internally balanced, but we had it. So like we had to add weights on the flywheel and all that yeah. stuff. Um, uh, lost my train of thought with it, but yeah. So it we think up. it was balanced incorrectly, which then caused the the bearings to spin, and then chaos ensued. Yeah, and, yeah. And then Fire. you hear bad sounds usually. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, we heard it. <laughs> That's so cool. We need. It, does Cletus do like the crazy burnout stuff at his house or his racetrack? Uh, yeah, they do. Um, I feel like Cletus this and cars. should go there. You know, put a cage in. We've just talked do the crazy about it. Spinning. We've <laughs> talked about it. Yeah. yeah. He'd yeah. probably pay to fucking ship that thing. Then, I mean, Homie's got it. loot. Yeah. I would love Homie's to, to do a burnout competition with this. He just got fucking, he's doing that jet sprint boat shit. Yeah, that looks so cool. That shit's really fun. Yeah. That is like the sport where your boat is most likely to end up on land. <laughs> yeah. It's, like, it's so <laughs> I shady. never realized how nimble boats are. You can really those turn jet, those things. Those jet boats are yeah. aggressive. Yeah. yeah. And I think I, it seemed like he went and entered a race and like podiumed like the first race. Uh, oh, yeah, he just did something. He did one. Oh, oh even his- no, he did stadium super truck, and he was leading the race, and uh, on literally the last lap, the last straightaway, he hit a jump and landed wonky and, like, spun out and oh, got passed by the field. Like, he I was leading that was at Long Beach. Yeah, Bobby Gordon. Wasn't that at Long Beach? Yes. That, yeah. that was here. That and was then, Long Beach, And I yeah. think he got out and started running. Like, And he, like, <laughs> lay down and started laughing. But, I mean, that was, yeah, that I was, was like, okay, he can drive. Yeah, like, he can I drive. didn't realize he had all of those skills. Like, and I knew I, he could yeah. drag race. But. I think Turns he out did owning a racetrack is good for practicing. Yeah, Right, who would have thought? Sorry, what did you say? Um, I think for the boats, I think you're right. I think he did end up winning his first yeah, boat he race, like, too. Yeah, yeah. He, 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 like, rented a seat in a boat and, like, went out and practiced yeah. and, like... Wow. I don't know. Awesome. I don't know if he... Did he win or did he qualify? Shout out to Cletus. Hell yeah, yeah brother. He invited me to come uh, un, to come do uh, one of his Crown Vic races. Oh, you but should I, do it. I, I wanted to, but he keeps inviting me on fucking days I've got gigs and I can't, uh, I can't go. It's yeah. a bummer. He, he like... Like in fairness, he do, he's invited me like four times, and every single time I've had a gig that I couldn't get out of. Um, Maybe the next. I one. really would like to. Didn't you do one? Yeah. Was it fun? I've done a couple of them. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. Was it like good racing, or was it just like a complete shit show? Um, a little bit of both, but it's just because you're like, and I wouldn't even say so much shit show, but you are, you know, swapping paint a little bit with the cars, but it's fun, you know. It's they're not your cars. Yeah. Like, is it literally like he's like, I, here's your car, and like. Yeah, everyone's got the same car, same ball of nitrous, and yeah, you have you have 
two people, depending on which one you did. I did the La Molitz races. Yeah, yeah, but, that's what he, that's yeah. the one you were talking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you shared the dri- shared yeah, drive shared with driver. who? Um, recently it was uh, uh, Peter Glick, uh, the, the Parker, I'm spit completely. Clickerman? Spit. Yes, thank oh, you. Oh, dude. Like Parker, the NASCAR yes, driver? Oh, yes. yeah, yeah. Great human. Yeah, Parker's yeah, great. Yeah, host, yeah. Yeah, no, he's great. And oh, by the way, he's a fucking NASCAR driver. Yeah. 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 How were your lap times compared to his? Um, did you so hang in there we didn't come, I didn't look at his lap times. I ended up doing the qualifying lap for us, and out of 20 cars, I put a seventh. Oh, okay. That's so, very like, solid. I was, I was very happy with that. Who ended um, up winning the race that you were in? Uh, I think Brian Deegan. Oh, you know, he can drive. I think he, yeah. that's who won. I don't remember too yeah, well. He's, he's, yeah, he's very good. Yeah. yeah he's a rallycross um, driver. Yeah. There's a bunch of pro drivers there. Yeah, yeah like, like Tanner's, 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 Tanner's done it. Tanner's Randy's, done it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, I want to go. I think I, I think I could do okay. Zach and I did it. If we did a team race, we do we do all right. We have Crown Vic experience. <laughs> we do have extensive Crown. Zach just had a go in like a fucking amazing Crown Vic that some guy home built. This guy like home built control arms, and he got stuff from Maximum Motorsports that they don't sell like to people. He uh-huh. said when you, he contacted them, they had an an officially written email that is like, we do not sell parts for Crown Victorias. <laughs> However, here's what we advise. And they gave him advice in parts. And this thing, like, agile, turned well, brakes were good, uh-huh. totally stripped interior. He's got coilovers on it. Oh, fun. Like, uh, spherical, um, spherical bearing Watts link in the back. This thing was amazing in the canyons. It didn't make any fucking sense. Oh, it didn't cool. make any sense at all, but it was really good. And he takes it to autocross and track days and stuff, like chases GT3s. Wow. Yeah. Probably GT3s that aren't as good at driving as like a pro. The funny thing he's about, yeah, funny thing about GT3s is the driver mod is not I was going to say, why does the driver mod? I was just going to yeah, say Yeah, no, I mean, it's not, that's the thing about a GT3, right? Yeah. yeah. So but it was impressive. high so. variation, variance in driver skill with those cars. Yeah. Which is fine. Nothing wrong with buying a GT3 to go learn how to drive on track. Yeah. Yeah. Didn't you guys have a car problem though in your race with the, at the Crown Vic LaMullet thing? Uh, the engine let go. It was That's either the problem. engine or the transmission. <laughs> yeah. One of the two yeah. let go. Yeah. yeah. What are you going to do? Yeah. Shit boxes. His budget for Crown Vicks, though. I mean, it's like it's like Singer eating up all the fucking 964s. The price of Crown Vicks is going to go through the roof if he's killing oh, yeah. 30 of them They're four times going, a year. Uh, what do you mean? <laughs> are they? He's like the Dukes Hard. of Hazard effect with Chargers, you know? Right? He's just eating them up. Yeah. Man, does he, does he have like a junkyard of Crown Vicks down there? What happens? They just pile them up and make them into like the wall, like in uh, Con Air, That'd where they great. have to drive through the, an entry of dead Crown Vicks. <laughs> kind of cool, actually. It'd be very cool. Uh, it's pretty cool to see what he's done with that racetrack and, yeah. and all that. It's wild. Yeah, he's he's a hard worker. There's a uh, there's a drag strip for sale in Oklahoma right I now. I saw that. Yeah. I would buy it if it were closer. Not like if I just it, have that kind of money laying around, but like I, I would mean, call could, a few friends to go in on I'm it. I'm sure you, know? you could buy it, but like, do you want to live in Oklahoma? No, that's why. Yeah. <laughs> No, of course you don't. That's why like, that's, that's why it's still for sale. <laughs> yeah. Otherwise, eight YouTubers would have bought it. Like, oh, where is it? Never mind. Yeah. Um, I think it was like, I think that place was like America's first concrete drag strip. Really? Which I don't know if that means that like, if it's from before asphalt, if it was like dirt, then concrete, and then asphalt, or if it was like- I don't know. M- people were doing asphalt, and then they built this one out of concrete as like a novelty. Have you seen dirt drag racing? I mean, in general, oh, yeah. yeah. And I've seen like that the race of gentlemen shit where they drag race on the beach. You seen that? No, not on the beach. It's like the most Instagrammable motorsport <laughs> ever because they're driving like cars from the twenties, like drag racing with Wait, like really? le- yeah, like leather helmets on the beach and shit. Oh, that sounds rad. It does, but the race is like two hundred yards. It's like yeah. it's like really sh- it's a really short race, and the cars are slow. So, uh-huh. but um, like pull up some race of race of gentlemen. Oh. Yeah, it's like that. Oh, yeah, that looks so cool. Yeah. Is that you know who was all about this was um, Jesse Combs. Yep. Jesse Combs was uh, like super she was the, into. Wasn't she the first woman allowed it to go on, or yeah, drive or something right like that? Oh, there she is, right there. Yeah. Uh, second row on the left, Zach. Yeah. Her uh, steering wheel came off during her run. I remember her telling the story, and but the car just kept Look going at that straight. Fucking shit box. So there's a she's shot of her somewhere. There. I'll try God. and find like it. Holding like, the steering she's wheel. She's holding the wheel in the air like <laughs> fucking <laughs> Mad Max Fury Road, um, and just kept driving. But yeah, you know they just race on the beach up near Pismo, I think. Yeah, they do this. They do yeah. it at Pismo. Yeah, and you got to dress like, like p- you dress all period correct. I love that. Yeah, I bet you meet some pretty cool people out there too. Oh, dude, it's a freak show. <laughs> it's fucking craziness. I I I, I think it's fun. For, for a couple years, I've intended to go like uh, watch it, and then it just never got around to it. But it's the kind of thing I'd like to get very yeah. drunk and go go watch on the <laughs> beach, right? 
I bet fucking uh, Bothwell would let us take the T. We should do that. Yeah, 100%. I just I did a story for Road and Track on a, on a Model T Speedster. Yeah, which was like nine hundred pounds and fifty something horsepower. It does eighty miles an hour, and it's just like two rails and two seats. Fucking sketchy stuff. Ah. You could go Model T. You could go super old school. Yeah. Throw up, you could get the Model T. I've actually record. thought about it. Yeah. yeah. What's the know. oldest car you'd want to take on a drag strip? Oh, I would take anything on a drag strip. Yeah. Model T would probably be... I bet it would do... I wonder if it would break a 20. <laughs> I wonder if it would go a sub 20 on a drag strip, this thing. I mean, it was like not that slow. Yeah. Like, But it's lightweight, 900 pounds. Yeah. And then how much horsepower did you say? 80? Like 50. 50? But it was a three liter, so it was like 50 and like probably like 85 pounds of torque. Uh-huh. So, <laughs> like, I don't know. I had a Hummer H1. It felt faster than that. Yeah. And that I mean, did, those I think, are heavy, though, Those too. did a 21 in the quarter mile. <laughs> the, just race Model T against H1. a Hummer. <laughs> Dude, this fucking Bronco is pretty quick. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It, it, gets, it gets up and goes when it hits boost. I wouldn't be surprised if it's in, like, the middle fives to 60. It goes uh, pretty good. Uh, five to sixty. Five seconds, oh, not five hundred oh, oh, oh. horsepower. No, it's like four hundred and eighteen. Eighteen horsepower. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it goes. That it's thing's cool. Good. I'm yeah, glad I got to see that. Yeah, you can drive it if you want. Maybe I yeah. actually might take you up on that. Yeah, it's cool. It. Yeah. I mean, it rolls like a fucking trophy truck when you <laughs> drive it. It's very fun. <laughs> so um, it's all right. So we're gonna get this Mustang back together. Yeah. So we the block just G-bodies. got back from the machine shop. So we're probably gonna start the assembly of that. The 2G bodies, the 14, the S14, the LS, the drift car. Oh, yeah, you still have that thing, too. Yeah, the Subaru, uh, the 2000 Impreza, oh, yeah. yeah, the 22B style one, um, and then the Prius. Oh, that shit box. <laughs> still have that? That thing. <laughs> I don't know what to do with it. Did you put a Honda motor in there or something? Yeah, like a K24 yeah, Turbo, or something? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's like the most YouTube car ever. Yeah. Um, and then the the Corvette, the Ferrari. Jesus. Yeah. You are rapidly amassing cars. Yeah. I'm running out of places to store them. You're running out of space, right? I'm going to have to talk to you soon. (laughs) I I make good price for you. (laughs) My new shop's going to have like a big fucking parking lot in front of it. So it'll have, we can, we can do silly shit in the lot if we want. Okay. Which is pretty fun, actually. Yeah, hell yeah. And it's like hidden from the street, so we won't have perfect people. Yeah, yeah. And actually, one of my neighbors makes castings for superchargers. Interestingly. Oh enough. really? Yeah. Do you know what superchargers? <sighs> no. Okay. But they're big, like root style blowers. Oh, that's cool. Um, it's not like BDS. Yeah, but I was it's just like, gonna say it was a BDS. It's not BDS. I would have remembered that, but yeah. it's like those those big type of fucking drag drag car shit. It's not like production car stuff. Yeah. It might it might be. He said he was working for Shelby, so it might be whatever the blower is that they use on the Super Snakes. Okay. Um, I, which I, I which think was Whipple, but, yeah, I, I was, but I would have yeah. remembered that too, so I don't really know. Yeah. Um, but it's pretty cool to see him, see them casting them. I thought that was kind of neat. Yeah, oh, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. What's um, what's the what's your status on your eBay projects? Um, or that end with with dropping the Ferrari out of a helicopter. Um, no, we partnered with them along the whole build, and now that the Liberty Walk 458's finished, I guess we're trying to figure out what more we can do in the future. Do you like how that thing drives? I do. I am a little disappointed that the front rubs a little bit. I wasn't, I didn't go into this thinking that it would rub, and I don't know if I want to clearance the um, the chassis, the unibody. Did you have to cut the body to put the, the fender? Ki- you yeah. cut the fender. The to rear do fenders. It? The front was a replacement. The rears had to be cut. Mm-hmm. Um, so I. Oh, the front is like a whole clip, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah. So it, where does it rub? It rubs uh, just uh, like the wheels are just that big, and the car is lowered enough to where it just hits on the on the inside uh. of the wheel well. If you were running the stock ride height, would it rub? I would imagine not. Uh, I don't know what those wheels and tires, though, because we definitely want wider to fit with the wide body. But, yeah. Yeah, but it's for Instagram, so <laughs> that's why. <laughs> tires don't rub on Instagram. I was actually <laughs> rub hoping to, he has like a 10-foot paint. No, the paint job's great. I'm saying the saying, the 10-foot paint job. Yeah. But 
Yeah, um, I don't know. I'm very particular. There's a lot of people who build cars on social media who they look good in a photo, but in person they're kind of beat. Yeah. But I was very, I'm very TV particular. Cars. Yeah, about all the cars. Um, just being as as clean and built as well as possible. So like little things that like people would probably never see or notice. You know, we like to go the extra mile to make sure that's all done. But I'm just also a little OCD when it comes to things. I mean, a Ferrari that rubs would drive me nuts too. I I only I on full look. lock. Um, but I think yeah, you can see where it hit there. But <laughs> yeah. yeah, it came out all right though. Yeah, I'm sure with maybe a smaller tire in the front, maybe I raise the suspension a little bit, it'd be fine. And wasn't um, the car, the car you got was like kind of scruffy too, right? But did it clean up nice? Yeah, it had a clean title, um, but it had definitely had some some use and abuse on it. It had in um, a check engine code mm -hmm. that they couldn't figure out. It says starter failure. Um, I think there was a stereo that was installed improperly on the car and it's pulling... Um, some type of volts that's freaking it out upon yeah. um, ignition on. So, yeah. But yeah. it starts. Starts fine, runs and drives great. It's the most Ferrari thing ever to say something's failing that works. And so the, the previous <laughs> like, owner replaced the entire body harness trying to chase this issue, didn't fix it, and it was just like, yeah, fuck this. I got a 488. I'm good. Really? Wow. Yeah. And it was just the aftermarket stereo probably. Assuming being weird. so. I don't even know. Yeah, I'm, I'm just guessing that's what it was. How do you put an aftermarket was. stereo in one of those cars? Isn't it all integrated? Um, well, I, Isn't it through the thing? It's, it's not like it's a... I, I, I just see all the speaker wires hanging under the dash, so I oh, assume. Really? Yeah. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. I just see the bazooka tube on the ground, and I'm like, all right. Oh, God. Uh, you know, yeah, not... even putting the nitrous on the car when we had to run some of the lines, we were just pulling out this wire that wasn't even this connected. Like extra? There. Yeah. Donnie's got my Lambo right now, mm -hmm. and... I sent it up there because the fucking it's a crank window mm -hmm. and it's literally the crank turns like a like a fishing reel. It's like a it's literally a reel of fucking string okay. that moves the window up and down, <laughs> right? Huh. And it snapped. This this cable. Really? Yeah, the cable is like it's like a literally a like a woven string and it was 35 years old and it snapped. Fine, he's got to get a new cable. How much is this cable? It's not about how much the cable is. It's, it's about where does it. he find one. Can you and just use any old cable? No. And not not if you're Donnie. If you're some fucking if you're the guy who had your Ferrari before <laughs> you, yes, any cable would be fine. If it's Donnie, <laughs> but that's not the point. While yeah. he had the car, it had an alarm installed on it in like the late eighties. Mm -hmm. And the alarm started going batshit up there. And it's like it's just like fucking flashing uh, shit and freaking nah. out. And so he's. we've now gone from this dumb window thing, which he's fixed already, to the alarm. <laughs> the entire security system. And he's like, dude, I have to take apart like everything oh, no. and find out what this is. And so someone in this car's past also had a bunch of aftermarket stereo shit in it yeah. from the 90s. And so he's like holding up wires. And he's like, you see this? This wire doesn't go anywhere. This is a wire <laughs> That's pretty much that comes out of here and it goes to fucking nothing. And so once he finishes my black car in a week or two, because I'm driving that to Pebble, mm -hmm. he's going to start Tearing completely into disassembling the red car to take all this extraneous fucking wires out and figure out what to do with this dumb alarm system, how to, yeah. how to get that out too. Because he's like, I can just start cutting shit. Let's but like, happens. then you're gonna have like you just said, you know, look under the dash and see a bunch of wires hanging, and that's that's a no no go. Yeah, yeah. So that's yeah. So a lot of these cars, when they get cheap enough, people start doing janky shit, and then it takes people who care to fix them. Yeah, yeah. There's also a lot of people who, you know, see oh it's a supercar, I'm gonna charge more, even though it's probably the same thing. So I can see where a lot of people are also jaded. And want to take it to the person that they probably think are giving them a fair rate for something when in reality they're just trying to do it to get the job. Yeah, but, definitely. definitely. Yeah. Uh, anything off the Patreon, Zach? Mm -hmm. We have uh, some questions for oh, you cool. from, our, from our people. Of course, if you want to ask questions of our guests, you can get in patreon.com slash the smoking tire podcast. Get an ad free listening experience. Get the show the same day it's recorded instead of waiting Tuesday to Thursday. And uh, of course, the extra mythical ninth show. That's where we talk about all the really controversial 
an important right. thing. That's where all the financial advice is. All the financial that's where all advice. The, the, the honesty c- about the press cars is. Yeah. <laughs> that's where I shit talk all the other YouTubers. That's where I say what I really think. Behind that paywall, baby. <laughs> uh, Rich B says, what car have you driven that scared the shit out of you the most? Um... I don't know. I don't really get scared driving a lot of cars. I love these questions, by the way. Um, I think the the That's one car Psycho Viper. I was just gonna say the <laughs> three thousand horsepower Viper. I was the most scared to flat foot it yeah. to get into it. But then once I did, I was like, oh, okay, this is yeah. I'll yeah, rip that this was, all day. That was a real shocking amount of power. Yeah. Uh, delivery to roll into that in fourth and actually have it stick. Oh, you're spinning. It was a hun- I did a hundred to two hundred. <laughs> In about five seconds. <laughs> that that was, I think that one was the most, it's funny you say that, that one, because that's one. what I was thinking. That was a good was, one. It was scary at first, but then once I started getting used to it. Yeah. yeah. You can get used to anything. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, Micah Moore says, what's a role you'd like to play? I assume he means acting. Yes. Uh, is there a specific TV series or movie franchise yeah. that you would like to be in? I mean, I think Micah hit the nail on the head with Fast and Furious and Marvel. You know, I I think both of those would be absolutely amazing. If there's a world where I can bring cars into film in a believable way, I I would love well, to not do that. Fast and Furious, yeah. but I like believable well, I'd still way. love to do it. Know, you know, I'm, I'm talking wanted... about creating. You know, I'm 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 currently working on my own treatments. I'm trying to get into producing my own films. I'm working every avenue. Um, that I can because I I would love to do a car film. I think that would be awesome and get to blend both worlds. It's I met like a that dream. dude, uh, Ali, Ali Afshar. Yeah, yeah who yeah. Uh, who is the producer of a couple of the films that you've been in. Yep. the Christmas stuff, uh-huh. uh, which is really funny. I told him to put me in a Christmas movie because it would make my mom really really, really <laughs> mad. And uh, <laughs> wait, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my mom would be like, "What the fuck is wrong with you?" I didn't even think about that. Yeah, um, but. Uh, um, he he rattled off a list of a whole bunch of like car movies he's made. Yeah, so that's um, why we were connected a couple years ago is because he's a big car guy. He's got a huge collection, a uh, former big drag racer, and yeah, he's just a very cool guy. We hit it off. We both have He's got um, a real problem with buying and, cars, this guy. Oh, he's got a lot of cars. He's got a real problem. <laughs> he's he's like, got a lot of cars. He's like, I went three weeks without buying a car. <laughs> wow. <laughs> he's like, it was, and he's no, got a that's real true. problem. Every, every other week, there's a new car. He's got a real it's problem. his garage he's the like, Hallmark collection? He's like, then I started <laughs> scratching out my eyeballs and went on Bring a Trailer and hit Buy It Now on three. Like, oh, my <laughs> God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the dude is dude is intense. Yeah, so I mean I yeah, even Ali we're we're talking about maybe doing some car stuff, so I think that'd be cool to be able to bring into the into the space. Just make it not not hokey, you know. <laughs> and even if you're even if you got in It's gotta a, be a little hokey, but Yeah, yeah. and even if you're first, if you got like, ah, I'm in Fast and the Furious twelve, it's like oh, you, you we that we jumped the shark on that one, I uh, think. I'll I'll go to space for Fast and Furious. Yeah. <laughs> I'm with you. I am making fun, There's but no like, doubt it's an institution for sure. Yeah. It's a spa- the space one, I was like, dude. My I Hannah and I were like we should leave. <laughs> okay, but people talk about Fast and Furious like, oh, it's just not cars anymore. It's not cars, but it's an action film. It's a series no, that was it. based on on cars in the beginning. And I mean, to take it to where it is, I think it's incredible the franchise that they've built. I hear you. <laughs> I'm impressed. But when Luda went to space, <laughs> I was like. <laughs> Supplemental oxygen? Like, oh, no problem. No, we don't need that. Like, no, we're good. Nitrous <laughs> yeah. uh, Chris Navio uh, wants to know if you plan on twi- putting turbos on the Z06 immediately, or are you going to have fun tuning it in different areas first? Chris, would you believe me if I said I was going to leave it stock? I mean, no, I don't believe her at all. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> It'll be interesting to see what that uh, what that engine will uh, will handle. I, I don't see it being very capable with boost. You know, it's it's a high revving engine. It's, it wasn't designed for that. Yeah. I'll probably. The Shelby 350s are not good with boost and they're flat plane and et cetera. I'll probably maybe do like a three pound spring. <laughs> but probably not much more than that. Yeah. I don't know. It would be. 
I mean, it's look, it's fucking YouTube, so you got to do the things, right? But modify the cars, yeah. take her to the track, have fun with them, do things that I never would probably do if I if I weren't in this space, which is what makes it so beautiful. So. Right? Yeah. yeah, I think it's going to be a real nice car by itself. Honestly, I think so too. Uh, oh well, this one is a. Uh, this was we we did this one uh, yeah, she last time, though. but you can answer it, Peter Mankey said, uh, I find that successful and driven people like yourselves typically have a short but meaningful mission statement. Do you have one? Um, I guess a few things come I to mean, mind. I mean, yours says it's okay not to be okay. Yeah, but is that a mission statement? I don't know. Could be. Well, I it's guess a, like what... It's a tagline. Maybe the question, what drives you? Like, what is, what is the backbone of everything you do and, like, why you do things like... Hartford Project and also all of your other actual projects. I'm going to separate what I do with mental health for for what I have on on other goals because I have different goals and mission statements for both. I think it's I'm in a way very passionate about uh, proving that you don't have to come from anything to achieve anything you want in life. Like my I look like. I come from unemployment and food stamps and working, living paycheck after paycheck, sometimes not knowing when I was going to make rent, eating cabbage and onions. And if I was really splurging, I'd get the frozen shrimp bags, the Kroger brand. Um, and I, I, my mom always told me growing up that you can do anything you want to in life. So I think it's, it's you know important for me to push myself and go as hard as I can in this life to see how far I can go to prove to people that you don't have to come from resources, you don't have to come from money, you don't have to come from any of that to be able to do the things that you, you've you always wanted to. So I'd say that's something that's maybe maybe my mission statement, I sure. guess in a way. Also, it's a tough question, I mean. Yeah, also be kind to people. Everyone's fighting a battle you know nothing about. Mm-hmm. Treat others the way you would like to be treated. Um, yeah. I think those are good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, anonymity says, "What B is for build car? Would you steal uh, the twin turbo LS Huracan?" <laughs> is that different from? Didn't they build the the Huracan like rally car thing? The Jumpicon. Too? Yeah. yeah, that's a different. It's car. a different one. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah, I would take that. I would take that one. Yeah. Um, I think Lay Surfay's question is possibly in false premise, but I'll let Amelia answer. Amelia, you were into legit racing, even going so far as to buy a Super Trofeo? I don't, you didn't buy a Super Trofeo. I did, did buy you? a Super Trofeo. You Trafeo. bought the car? Yeah, I was very passionate about wanting to race in the series, and I would still love to. Um, truthfully, finances. It, That's expensive. It, it's very expensive to race in Super Trofeo. Um, can't you just buy it? Can't you just arrive and drive that? You can. Yeah. So I was trying to go the more affordable route of having your own car so you don't have to rent one. Is that more affordable? Um, at, at the end of the day, yeah, of really? course, you save a little bit of money. Oh, wow. um, so that's what I tried to do with that. But um, and then, Oh, the rest of the question was, now you're doing commercials, scenes, and shoots. Is racing M gone and acting M here? I um, think they're not mutually exclusive, are they? Yeah, I mean, I, f- I feel like I can do both, and I try to balance a very hectic schedule, and I would love um, – to story Super Trofeo if I could afford it. Um, and, but I also think my attention has been on film and television because that's where I want to go. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I feel like with the drag racing, I still get that that bug out, and then I can also still um, find time for everything else. But the the race schedule for Super Trofeo is also, um, it was like eight weeks out of the year, not including the practice weeks and the travel. So I think it ended up coming out to half the year. I'd probably be... If you're going to race, you're going to give 100% of your time into it. And I, I think for me, um, I, I want to I wanna act. And I, I wanted to put 100% of my attention into that. And then maybe down the line, look into doing a, a road racing series. But um, I think drag racing kind of fills that bug for me in, in trying to build the record-breaking cars. What is the what is the cost to do a season of Super Trofeo? Half a million. Yeah, that's so much fucking money. It's a lot of money. That's so much money. Yeah. Half a million plus the car? Um, half a million all in with practices and the car. And the car. Yeah, if you're renting. If you're, okay. Yeah. And if you buy the car? I I think if I remember the Excel sheet that I did, it was like 350 That's fucking so expensive. Yeah. And you're not making a return on that investment either. Yeah. Um, and then you're also taking half the time out of the year, whereas... Or is, yeah, I don't know. It's, it just, and then you need, it just to, buy, you need make... to have a truck to transport it, right? You need like a support team. Um, you That's with um, a race team. 
Oh, you're okay. basically buying a seat from a oh, table. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that's so expensive. Yeah, and I I wouldn't I wouldn't see a return on the investment for that. Yeah. So for me, it's just yeah, that doesn't make any sense. Yeah, Don't I still hope to do it. I, I hope eventually it's I can afford fun, to do it. But yeah. Like... Oh my god, those cars are so fun to drive. Mm. Like I I love those cars so much. I just drove the Toyota eighty six Cup, and it was really good fun. Yeah. One hundred twenty five grand to buy one. Oh wow. Thirty two to enter the series. Okay. And it's fourteen races next year over seven weekends, two races a weekend. Oh, nice. And it's like Road America, Road Atlanta, VIR, Sebring. Oh, it's that's cool. Sonoma, that's pretty cool. legit. Yeah. The car was fun as fuck. Yeah. Really, I mean, still, but but still, like, to, to race a fucking 86, it was, you know, 125 grand to buy the car and then 32 to enter the series and then you gotta have a truck and a team and, yeah. you know, you'd end up being probably 300 grand in by the end of it it's so I, much money i also don't know how much con people would be like oh we'll just film it and you're good well yeah, youtube right. videos don't make that much money and i don't think i could film on top of racing because filming is a whole job on its own and mentally i would just need to be in the racing mindset so i think yeah. that would be hard I mean, to capture paying content people as well. to fill to, to you need to pay a crew yeah essentially yeah. and like i mean when you're Racing happens on the races schedule. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't yeah. be like, hang on a second, I gotta get another take of this, you mm -hmm. know, or whatever. Like that's like even filming like regular ass content on other people's track days where it's like red group and you're like, yeah. oh, all right, speed the cameras. Oh, uh, you know that's what I mean? Or like, yeah. That or even at a, at an open test and tune day on a drag strip, if you're not renting the strip yourself yeah. for a couple hours. Most like, of the time we go to the drag strip we're we're usually just renting it. Yeah, and it's like, way easier if you. Can yeah, and like, it. and and we've done it on just test and tune days, and it's it's fine. You don't get as much seat time as you know, opposed to when you have it to yourself. But I will What's always. What's Pomona? Uh, Formosa. For, oh yeah. Yeah. So. What do they want it for a day or a half day or whatever it is? Uh, by the day, it's like three thousand. Yeah, it's expensive. Yeah. 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 That's more than what my rent was in L.A. Yeah. When I moved here. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's that. I mean, if you fucking road courses. Yeah. You, know, you want to rent Willow for a day. It's oh, it's so much, yeah. I think, is Laguna the most expensive, right? Yeah, it's one of the most expensive one we ever reached out to. Yeah. It was, I think it was 25 or more yeah. for a day. No, I can't when remember. Thousand dollars. When yeah. I went to Hypercar Invitational it. and they got loud, a loud weekend. Mm -hmm. So, you know, Laguna's got sound limits there. Yeah. It's 96 decibels, which uh -huh. is really quiet. That's very quiet. Really quiet. Most cars factory are louder than I I blew sound decibels. in a Lotus Savora <laughs> at Laguna once. And they got a loud weekend. And it was $150,000. Oh, buddy. Yeah. Oh, that's because a lot. Because there's only like 10 weekends a year that you can do loud. Yeah. And like the Indy car race gets one. Yeah. And, like yeah. Mo and Monterey Historics gets one. And like the kind of people that get them are. They're are, repaving that track, aren't they? Or did they already do it? Uh, they it didn't did, look like they had done they it. They hadn't. They haven't done it recently. They might. I don't know. I think they're because the I know. The pavement's pretty good there, isn't it? I, didn't, I, I don't have a lot of complaints about the pavement. Because I think they're. Low key letting some people um, drift and have fun on the track. Uh, I think Tanner, Tanner yeah, drift. Tanner. I saw his video drifting because I think yeah. I think they're repaving. Well, it, that was during that event. Yeah. So they're gonna repave it soon. So like, all right, someone can drift it if they want to. Because before, did did they not allow that beforehand? I don't think they've allowed. But I listen. I could be completely. They've wrong. never held a drift. They've never event. held a drift event, held, event yeah, there. Yeah, never um, an event. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. It seems like a kind of a dangerous place to have a drift event. <laughs> Nah, dude, that'd be so fun. Yeah, Tanner couldn't. <laughs> do, was dangerous, and they do uh, it. Like, Tanner's it. car couldn't do a full lap. Like he would have to drift turns one, two, and three. Yeah, and then coast. Not there coast, wouldn't be but enough like, speed going into three and four or four to five. No, his the car. You know, drift cars are meant for like a Formula D lap, which is like three corners. Right. It's not meant to do a minute and thirty five seconds. Yeah. of Fucking uphill loaded. You know, drifting. So he would drift turns one, two, three, and four. On up the uphill. The front. No, the front, front straight. Of, front straight. The end yeah. of the front straight is one and two. Yeah, the three tight. to the right, four to the right. Yeah, and then he would go slow and cruise. Up okay, that's what I'm thinking. The, cruise yes. up the uphill. I was thinking five, two is six. one for a second. Yeah, so one. Okay. Yeah, yeah. One is the kink in the front straight. Yeah, I forget. Two, that. three, four, and then he would cruise up five and six, and then drift and then fucking handbrake down the corkscrew awesome. and do seven, eight, nine, 
and then kind of coast it out oh, uh, through so 10 fun. and 11. I mean, it's that's it's, basically it, linking the whole day. It is. Yeah. It's 2.4 miles. I mean, you know, basically. So that would be a long drift if he, if yeah. he did the whole thing. And he yeah. sent his rowdy. car st- after that weekend. He sent his car straight back to Stefan uh, Papadakis and was <laughs> like, "Yeah, we need to do some things." He's been on that same engine since 2011. He said the same really? engine, and he bought it used. Oh, he bought wow. the engine used out of a Le Mans Corvette C6R wow. Corvette and uh, wow. just fucking put it in the car and has done absolutely, he owns that car, that Passat, and he's done nothing to it. Huh. And he's like, that's yeah, amazing. this fucking thing is like leaking oil and the gaskets are fucked. Oh, and but dude, that's right. 11 years Yeah, I know, he's he beat amazing. the balls off the engine yeah. and he was able, I talked to him about it, I guess I guess Stefan was able to, um, to to get like parts from the from like Pratt and Miller or whoever it yeah. was that built this this thing and oh, and cool. they're good to go yeah cool he's good to go now yeah it was badass that's a testament uh, to that yeah. car uh, was there was anything that, else oh, was that the yeah. last one uh, I think there was one yeah. or two more holy shit James Crowley's got fucking words here uh, who is driving okay. what when the C eight and four five eight race have you raced the car against the two. Where it's cars and cars against each other. No, but I was gonna do that in like two days. I oh. don't even remember if I've talked about this on the oh. vlog. Maybe I have. Maybe someone <laughs> just uh, I just knows me that well. Yeah. Um, My money's on the C8. Mine is too. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I don't know. Maybe the C8. I'm gonna put the C8. Turbos on it still. Yeah, but I'm gonna put Why on a nine not? nine pounds at the gate. Why would that not be the four? four? It's not that fast. Because the video grip. needs views, Matthew. If it can grip. <laughs> no, still, yeah. It might just spin tire. You Gally never know. You're just mystery. putting regular street tires on it? Yeah. Well, I figured it's street tires and street tires. It's got to be fair, right? I'm not going to put the uh, uh, the drive I tires see, on it'll it. I still win. Uh, are you putting turbos on the 4 of 8? It says, now that you're squeezing the 4 of 8, no. that means turbos? Uh, nitrous. Oh. Yeah, nitrous. Ooh. Is uh, that, that going to do anything? It does. It does? Yeah. Really? I don't use it too much because I'm trying to like respect the longevity of the engine. And I really just go through a whole bottle purging it for like, when you yeah. pull up at car shows, the kids are like, oh, nitrous, and you purge it and they love it. It's Where in do a you memory. Put the purges? They're right out the, the two vents in the back. Oh, okay, nice. cool. Yeah. 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 You guys, creative purging is what it's really about. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I notice a difference when I squeeze it. Um, I also don't I saw have on a r- Viper once someone had the little snake badge and drilled little nostrils. That's yeah. cool. Come out, come out the nostrils. That's WS6s cool. coming that out of the big intakes. I always thought that was rowdy. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. This fucking meathead I knew back in the day had this fucking, had a Diablo uh-huh. Roadster and had this guy build this insane wet fogger system. Uh-huh. And he had two bottles in the frunk. Really? And he had six purgers. And I don't think this guy ever actually hit the spray for real no, once. No, it's just for purging. I think, I think it was just a system that purged. It's I don't, just CO2. I, wasn't I don't, nitrous. Yeah. Yeah. It was just goes to a dive fucking, shop. Dude, this thing had six purgers, and it would come out of, it was four out of the engine compartment vents, uh. and then two out of the windshield wiper sprayers. So this thing was just purging all over the place. <laughs> it's, like it's like the moon lander just like going, Neil Armstrong is trying to write that. But you got to have like individual, then choose like which one you're purging. So when you're parking, you can just like. Yeah. Yes. When you're parallel parking, you just have it fucking purging out. That'd be really funny. Tom Hanks in Apollo 11. That's a YouTube build for you right there. Like active, you connect it to your steering. Yeah. Right? So, like, when you turn the wheel to the right, it purges out of here. <laughs> that would be funny to see. Uh, what's the process like buying a JDM dog? Did Uni actually come from Japan? Uh, no. She didn't come from Japan, though. No. No. Did you tell people she did? I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> I think he might be making a joke. Like, bitch, um, that dog came from Chino. Like, <laughs> uh, I did pick her up from the airport. Um, <laughs> in the international terminals, though, who really knows what happened? Yeah, that counts, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, I think he, uh, they're just calling the dog JDM because it's a Japanese breed. Oh, yeah. She's very cute. Yeah. It's a very cute dog. Thank you. Is he chilled out a little bit? So She's really hyper. She line. just got spayed. Oh, mm-hmm. and so that I, helps. I love this dog to death. I genuinely care so much for this animal. Um, she recently just went through her first cycle. She went to heat. So at first, okay, this dog's eight months now. The first month of puppy ownership, I was crate training her. Mm-hmm. I didn't realize that you have to take a. a dog to use the bathroom every two hours and that was probably 
one of the most exhausting couple months of my life. Mm-hmm. Everything's good. Yeah, there's Winnie. Um, everything's good. We're, we're chilling. She's growing up. Um, and then she gets her period at like five months and they're supposed to do it at six and she's going to get spayed first. Uh-huh. So for five weeks, she's in a diaper. Oh, no. And oh, man. I have to, whenever I let her outside to go pee or play outside, I take the diaper off. Whenever she comes in, I have to put the diaper on. She doesn't like the diaper. Oh, of course. So that's yeah. a mission on its own. Oh, wow. And then, of course, then I have to wait after after that. She just got spayed. She's got a cone around her neck. She doesn't really like it. And then I yeah. bought her a little inflatable donut because I thought it was cute. And she doesn't she'll like that. She'll be okay. Yeah. She's just tired. Yeah. She's not really doing a whole lot right now. Yeah. She'll be mad at you for a little bit, but then she'll be okay. Yeah. That I, I My first cat, I waited too long to get him. I was like, they're like, yeah, you want to do it between, you know, six weeks and six months. I was like, God, that's a fucking gap. Yeah. And so I, I figured I'd wait a little while. And I waited a month too long yeah. and he fucking like peed all over everything in my house oh. and, I, and then I found out like actually you want to do it at the very first day oh, really? they will, they will well, allow you to do it I was told that you couldn't spay a dog until six months whatever you were told so was then, probably right but. and then at five months she uh, yeah so that was fun they thought it would be a life lesson for you they thought it would yeah. you just needed to learn about diaper training <laughs> I know um this one's weird. Dante says, what car, bike, or engine names can be confusing when taken out of context? For example, Continental GT could be a Bentley or a Royal Enfield. 240 is a gold mine. I mean, that's an interesting thought exercise, I guess, but... Well, I, I mean, I wonder how OEMs come up with names for cars when they're the same, like... Nissan 240. That's probably why they have to add the SX, right? And the Volvo 240. Well, number, like numbers can't be, trademarked. can't be trademarked. Number, numbers can't be trademarked. So there's that. Yeah. Um, Continental GT, if the if Bentley has the trademark for cars, right. Bingo. then you could use it for a motorcycle with, and, and not and get around that. Yeah. Because um, everything is trademarked to its particular use case. Is he talking about trademarking though? I mean, uh, I, I think don't know. Just what this can is be one confused? of these questions. That's is like that a saying f- like a raptor? People might confuse it with a dinosaur. I think it's like maybe he's thinking if you go, I have a Continental GT, and someone goes, Oh, the Royal Enfield. And you go, No, the Bentley, or uh, vice versa. Which, yeah, yeah I, I think a, it just depends on what crowd you're with. It's like oh, I have a car, uh, Corvette. You have the Ferrari. <laughs> yeah, I feel confused the two like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, Porsche. You know, when the 911 came out in the 60s, it was called the 901. But Peugeot was like, oh, oh, oh. Mm. we own this 901 already. And they had to go yeah. to 911. Hmm. Um, yeah, I don't have a lot for you, Dante. I think Sorry. BMW is the most confusing now because the, the numbers have detached from the, the number of the badge has detached from the displacement of the engine. Yeah. That's the only time where I get confused. Mercedes has too. They're, they're, oh, right. They're, the they're, 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 yeah. They don't mean much anymore. Mm-hmm. Only motorcycle motorcycles are pretty spot on with their numbering. Yeah. It's usually the CCs yeah. or the cubic inches if it's a Harley. Um, but yeah, sorry, has a weird place to end this show, isn't it? <laughs> I'll move this to the middle. We'll end on the dog chat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Cool. So Pebble. Yeah. Got plans? Or are you just gonna hang out? Um, try. I'm. I'm. Trying to finalize some things. I've signed some NDAs for things. If things work out, then... NDAs? Yeah, I, I told you about it. I'm just not going to say it on the podcast oh, okay. until we finalize things. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I didn't know there's NDAs for Pebble Beach. All right. Uh, we, yeah. just, uh, we just interviewed Gordon Murray yesterday, who was oh, like, yeah. the best. And so now we've, we're have we going to meet up with him at Pebble Beach. He's oh, going to take cool. us on a tour of his T50 supercar with the sucker fan. And the fucking... Oh, wow. NAV12. Take stick. lots of video. I'm going to try. Yeah. yeah, I'm going to try. Yeah. Parties? Um, maybe? I don't know. It depends if I'm going to be... Uh, it depends what uh, commitments I have, but... Are you, are you just getting that Z06 to drive up, or is it part of an event? No, they're, they're giving me the Z06 to drive Sweet. up, film with it, make some content. Um, is it your first time at Pebble? No, I've been before. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I've never gone to actually do the parties and the events. In the past, I've gone with friends who um, more just socialize, we'll say. So this will be the first year actually going for the events and the parties. And, and I've been to Quail a couple times, mm. and, and I always have a great time there. I'll be there again this year. Um, but yeah, I think Quail, then uh, Concours, and then 
um, Exotics on Broadway. And, and oh, then, isn't that Amy's gig? Yeah. That's yeah, Amy's. Yeah, what yeah. day is that? That's Saturday. Okay. Yeah. So. I mean, is it in the morning or, you I, know? I think morning. She, she sent it all to me. If it's in the morning, I'll go. Okay. Yeah. I got to drive back on Saturday. I th- I'm thinking about Saturday night or Sunday morning going back to. Yeah. I was thinking maybe I'd wake up at like, because I got to come home on Saturday. I was thinking about waking up at like 6 a.m. on Saturday and okay. fucking driving PCH back. I haven't done it in a while. I Exotics on Broadway is 1 to 6 p.m. Oh, okay. Man, yeah. I don't know if I can stick around for oh, that. First couple hours. Well, if you're going to yeah. leave at 6. Wait, I have a question for you. Mm-hmm. More on talking about waking up early. What? How many hours a night do you sleep and what time do you go to bed at? What time do you wake up at? I suck. Okay. <laughs> I am lame. Good or bad? And I, I mean, I go to bed between 9 and 10 okay. every night, pretty much. Mm-hmm. And I wake up between five and six in the morning. Okay. Usually. That's pretty yeah. reasonable. So I sleep like all right, but I but I'm old and that's shitty. like seven, eight hours? Yeah, it's yeah. like I go seven. I okay. go for se- why? Do you feel what? comfortable on seven? Seven's okay. Yeah. Yeah. You feel Last night I got five and I feel kind of shitty right now. Yeah. Because we had to go drive in the middle of the desert in the early in the morning to go film the Bronco. But yeah. why? Well, how much sleep are you getting? I don't as as a person I need a lot of sleep. I obviously don't get the sleep that I would like to get. Um, it just always fascinates me. I'm curious to see what other people do. Um, I wish I needed less sleep, but I mean, in a perfect world, I'm getting nine to ten hours every night. But oh, wow. I, I never get that. I usually get seven. Yeah, um, I couldn't. I couldn't sleep that much if I wanted to. Yeah, it would be very very hard for me. Yeah, if I sleep well, past six thirty a.m., my used to your circadian wife is like, "I'm rhythm. so proud of you." <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Yeah, and I, she stays up doing like she does like four crossword puzzles a night. Wow, Hannah does. So she she's like amazing at crossword puzzles and like Sudoku and shit. So she stays up until like midnight doing that shit. I love that she's not scrolling or like no, she doesn't. She does. She tries to not look at her phone after like nine o'clock at night. Yeah, and so she does crossword puzzles and stuff. I'm trying to start it's, implementing kind of boundaries like that. Of when I wake up, don't check my phone for the first hour. Know. Turn it off a certain time before you know when I start winding down before going to bed. Trying to go to bed at, at a consistent time, but you know when you're working in a shop and sometimes you're there for 15 hours wrenching, and then yeah. you go home, and then the next day you feel sluggish, and then mm-hmm. the third day you're off when you yeah, it's just yeah. a whole cycle. Yeah, so. shit adds up. Yeah, it does. I've, we like we we've been out since five in the morning and drive back and like I haven't done like my office shit yet today and yeah. it's now like three thirty or almost four o'clock on a Friday. Yeah, and I'm like, oh god, if I don't <laughs> if I don't get these fucking emails out by five, like they're not nothing's happening until Monday. Yeah, yeah. this is why I yeah. really catch up on sleep on Saturday. It's like yeah. I get eleven hours, which I know you can't really catch up with your sleep debt, but you can you know do your best. I've, I've heard. I feel like you can catch up on sleep. I feel like it helps, but I think the the scientists have shown like you're not yeah. you're not Studies erasing past that, yeah. sleep debt type yeah. thing, but it is what yeah. it is. Yeah, it's tough, you know, because the the internet is a seven day a week business. Yeah, but also this physical business that we're in right now is also a seven day a week business. Yeah, so it's tough to actually take fully time off. You yeah, know? and yeah. traveling for work is like you know a day you're not there is a day you're not there, so it's, yeah. it's hard, but. Yeah, thanks for coming down, man. Yeah, thanks it's good for to see you. Me. I'm Likewise. glad you got. I'm glad you can make it. Yeah. I'm sorry about the traffic you're about to sit in <laughs> going home. Oh, it's gonna be terrible. I'm sorry. That's all right. I'll turn on your podcast. I wish I could make it. Thank you. I wish I could make it not terrible, um, but I'll definitely see you at Quail. Yes. Um, I will. I will introduce you to Professor Murray. Deal. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll talk about the party situation after the show. Okay. Cool. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, we will. Uh, we will talk to you on mo- Monday. When is our next show? Monday? Something like that. We have Ash Thorpe next week and some other shows. We have three shows next week, don't we? I feel like we have three shows next week. I think that's right. I don't want to put we pressure have, on. We got, we got a lot Pretty going sure on. Pretty sure we got week. three shows next week because we're got to fucking build them up for because we'll be because I'll be gone. Yeah. That's our show. See y'all later. Have a good week.